you can copy that and give that to Ben and Bill. Oh, man. Um, oh yeah, if they're on my profile, they just they just refresh it. <laughs> I'm just putting you away. I love how cat gets fun. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, my cat's getting more preference than even me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my sleeping cat. If you're super keen and you've joined 40 seconds before the actual show starts, then congratulations. This is what it's like behind the scenes of a show you've never seen before. It's called Recapping with Cam. I'm Cam. That's my cat little buddy. And soon you'll see the proper intro. But I do respect how keen you were to get here early, so thank you. to recapping with cam it's a brand new show with a very broad and vague title which means that i can pretty much just have a handful of people on the show and talk to them about whatever i want and if technically those people are talking about something that happened in the past something that's happened then that counts as recapping and i'm here so the whole title of the show works we've got a couple of guests who will be joining us today and I even have a friend who's going to be helping me in the background, not not the cat that you can see above me. I've got a technical producer. Aiden, give us a wave. Now go back. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is a brand new show. It's called Recapping with Cam. And as I mentioned over top of the music, and thanks to Reese for making that song for this podcast um he actually made it for a gaming podcast that i did one episode of so we never know this might be the only episode of this that happens but for now i'm feeling good doing something new live streaming is something i haven't done before and i don't think this type of live streaming has been done uh, as budgetly as what i'm about to do here on twitch um because all i'm really doing is i've just got a bunch of things on my desktop including my producer Aiden there. How are you going, Aiden? Very good, my friend. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, when I 
when I told you I wanted to do a live stream, did you expect it to be as budgetly put together <laughs> as, what, as what we're doing in the background here? I think 2020 is budget. Mm. So as soon as I yeah. suggested it, you're like, well, if it's in line with the rest of the year, it's going to be chaos. It's going to be <laughs> draining chaos. Yeah. You also didn't mention if you were getting me on as a producer or a magician. So ah, okay, good. Um, and which of those two skills do you feel you excel at the most? Um, well, I don't know. Like I've got this $5 bill and you know, just a regular $5 bill. Mm -hmm. and just, uh, plug that and then that would just, yep. I did not expect that. And so, uh, you literally raised the bar of the show. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Um, we had his online Zoom trivia uh, on Wednesday and the theme was magic. Yeah. And did you win? That sounds more like a talent show uh, than a trivia trivia night. Yeah, well, we actually had a, a, um, like a full-on magician who's actually a magician judge all of the, um, all the, all the people in the group did magic tricks. Mm. Uh, I came second, um, but I think that's mainly just because the magician doesn't know true magic. Yeah, he was a fraud. Yeah. Was the magician... I didn't... Because I know the trivia night you're talking about. haven't been able to attend yet, but it's a bunch of our friends in a Zoom call. I didn't realise there was a magician in our group of friends. Well, it sounds like two now, including yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, Dickie uh, was hosting this week and mm. he upped the bar and uh, sent an email to a magician to ask him if he could um, judge the talent quest. And yeah. the guy said yes. And Amazing. he came on and he did it. And it was just like, and he was like, all right, cool guys, have a great night. Um, thanks. <laughs> and we were just like, I can't believe he said yes. Wow. I respect okay. that. Now we've kind of got this thing where uh, we've got to try and up each other. And I just want to get like, Samuel Jackson or someone to come on and just be like, hey guys, like, have a good night. And just be like, fuck, I even got access to Samuel Jackson. <laughs> you want to win. You see it as an opportunity to compete and win. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have no knowledge to add to the answers of the quit of the quiz. So I'll just I raise you Samuel Jackson. The quality of the guest. The quality of the guest is important. And let's um yeah. let's put all of that pressure on our first guests ever. To the show um in the waiting room in the zoom waiting room right now we've got ben and holly and i'd love if they could walk from the waiting room into the main room i guess that's what you call this but um maybe while we're waiting for them to do that i can talk about oh no here we go ben and holly hello welcome hey. hello you guys are in melbourne at the moment and you had some kind of good news announced today how are you feeling about it um, I'm I'm pretty happy. I don't really know what the restriction changes are because it's so hard to keep up with mm. with all of them. But um, Holly's told me that there's changes coming, so I'm pretty pretty looking forward to being able to do some normal stuff. Yeah, we can play golf. We can go play golf. That was one of the changes. Yeah, Holly kept talking about golf a lot. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, stop, stop. You need to tell me. Like what? What's going on with golf? What? Like, why are we avid golfers now? <laughs> Is that because I didn't see the announcement, Holly? Did was it pretty focused on golf? No, no. I really clung on to that one. I think. Yeah. I was quite excited about. It. Um, I've been wanting to play golf for a while, so um, then lockdown happened and my dreams were dashed. Um, mm. But no, it's it's not too much of a of a lifting really. Like we can go more than five k's again, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah, um, and there's no yeah. how long you're outside for. So yeah, and um, these this uh, that we're saying out loud though, because you're like, isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? Like, but it's just normal things that we should be allowed to do, I guess. Exactly. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, it is a tough one. Um, and do you guys live just you two, or is it have you got housemates? It's just us two. So it's just us two, Kim. It's just us two. Because um, my my question my question was going to be so that's probably better that you've had each other. But from the tone of voice you used just then, <laughs> I feel like. 
wonder. We... That has its ups and downs, Cam. <laughs> uh, there's, there's better days and worse days. Oh, look, but... it's been, I think it's been great for our relationship. It forces you to talk through things. You mm. cannot leave. So that's a real benefit. Can't leave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah. Ben, uh, do you see it the same way? <laughs> um, Does I he have think, a choice? I think my patience has... I've really honed honed that that down to a, to a fine art now. Yeah. Patience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. But no, it hasn't been all bad, really. Um, but yeah, I I want to be able to leave my house now to to really appreciate my home. So at the moment, it's just like very taken for granted. Yeah, we just mm. moved in like right before realistically, um, mm. and so we were pretty much empty house which has been good like we've been just sort of playing dolls house for months but now we're just breaking things because we want to replace them because we have nothing else to do so yeah it's just costing us a lot of money and homewares i think that's a big thing we need to get out the house and stop playing with it yeah yeah, yeah i appreciate that um i've i moved house <laughs> to move here i stayed in a lot of airbnbs um and it feels really good now to be settled into a place but i can't even begin to imagine the strange combination of moving into a place but then kind of being like having the restriction of like that's the place you have to only be now so yeah i do i do feel for you guys but hopefully hopefully restrictions lift as fast as they possibly can and you can get out and play some golf Yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So two people, uh, so you can have 10 people from two households. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have golf, tennis. I'm not sure about lawn bowls yet mm -hmm. to be too soon. But okay. which, of those tennis, games, which of those games would you say your skill is the highest on? Well, actually golf, okay. surprisingly. Yeah, I, was like, I, I did play golf a little bit in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I think I'd be, I'm, I don't know, I'm just guessing, but I think I'd be better at tennis. Yeah. You just feel, you yeah. got a feeling? Um, uh, I, I reckon I can run longer than her. Um, and just, yeah, arms. Ben's like six, nine when he runs. He goes, <laughs> yeah. Ben, and tell me. Try to go for a job. It did not work out well because Ben, yeah, I, I try to get Holly into um, into running during lockdown, oh, and yeah. pretty much I was just trying to show off how fast I could run. Yeah, so you were suggesting it as if it was like a nice thing, like, hey, it'll be good for our health, but you you just wanted to show her that you could beat her in a race. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of what it came down to. We eventually. weren't running together. It was Ben sprinting and then walking for a little bit and me catching up and then him sprinting off again and then walking for a little bit and i was like that's not how you run because you run out of gas so you just kind of jog and then you know but you were no, chasing him likes the sprint walk sprint yeah i wouldn't even technically call yeah, that ru running together <laughs> yeah it was just me chasing me down the street <laughs> not much different the other evening um it was, it was just a standard house really yeah um, ben, this is probably like super private, but on your Instagram, you you published something recently. It looked like it was from a, a group chat, and it, and in that picture, someone in the group chat said you were beating your chest, saying "Go me." Is are you the person in that story that that group chat screenshot is about? No. Ah, uh, okay. No, so I'm I am uh, was fortunate enough to to be to be in that group chat. So that was madness. It was pretty much the context of that uh seemed to to stem from a night out uh, a couple a couple of the boys and mm. you know one thing led to another and yeah it looks like there was a bit of wrestling that went on so during lockdown i've kind of just been going through my phone and, and coming across screenshots and, and things that i didn't know that i had so that's been been kind of fun yeah bringing up those memories and a past life can Refle yeah. past reflecting life, on yeah. the wrestling days <laughs> <laughs> yeah so been finding all all sorts of things on my phone yeah I, the, I think Instagram dumps you would have been witness to recently of about 15 photos random photos from from camera logs that have mm. just been going up on Instagram 
Um, and then people have been messaging him since going, hey, are you okay? Yeah, I are think people right? think I might have lost the plot because I've been getting a lot of, you know, how's it going? Are you okay? Yeah. Or people that I, I often don't hear from. So it's, oh, it's been nice. A, it's a sign of a madman when you when you suddenly post 15 random camera roll photos onto your Instagram out of nowhere from, from about late, a year of not posting. From think, late yeah, 2018. Like, oh, lockdown's really got into him. We need to reach out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that means you got good mates though, Ben. That they're going. Let's check in. Let's see. let's just make yeah, sure he's that, all right. That's, that's, <laughs> that's oh, win win nice. for you. Looking at some fun memories and also make your mates being like, "Uh, you're good." <laughs> but yeah. Mm. yeah, we will say though the the reception from people not in Melbourne is very like, "Oh yeah, there's that lockdown thing you're in, right?" Oh, Weird. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit frustrating being in Melbourne because you're like, it's actually crazy. Mm, <laughs> like, mm. um, and trying to, I think trying to get people to understand that has been a bit frustrating. Um, family and friends back in New Zealand um, just don't realise how good they have it. And then also you see like Sydney and stuff. Like, mm. My mother asked crazy. me why I kept shaving my hair off. And I was like, because if I let it grow, mum, I, I look like one of the Beatles. And there's no hair salons. So yeah. <laughs> it's this sort of, no. Yeah, for what sure. What was your inspiration behind the shaved head, Cam? Was that was that a lockdown Male a lockdown set off, or was that pattern baldness? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that. nice. Yeah, it was either it was he either embrace it or just look worse and become like a, a slightly younger fry attack. It was it got to the point where I was like thinking about my angles. I had to treat every cap like a yarmulke and just make sure it was strategically placed <laughs> around the parts where it should be or um or yeah just make sure that i'm kind of looking down my nose at people so that they didn't catch how little was left up there so i was just like this is no way to live my neck my neck needs a break so i was just like you know what i've just gotta i've just gotta embrace it it wasn't a fast process though it was like looking in the mirror a handful of times like oh why and then like imagining that i could will myself to for it to grow back i genuinely convinced myself <laughs> in a few moments that i was like oh. i think that it's possible yeah. to just like there's that guy i think his name's win hoff and he can force himself to hold his breath for like eight minutes yeah. in the antarctic yeah. and so i've seen that on youtube and i was like if a person can do that then surely a person can will themselves to just grow here that is here just grow it again on top like i just i i had <laughs> i got to this belief where i thought i could do it but then um yeah that did you, faded did you, that, um, did you see that woman um on dr phil a little while ago um about jilly juice have you heard about this no what can she do so it's, it's a juice um a lot of salt um a dangerous amount of salt that's why she was on dr phil okay um and the juice was like a health clean she if you go there's a whole hole if mm. you go into the hole you can buy a book on eBay, I think. Um, <laughs> the book on eBay, which is you print it out yourself. Um, but essentially, uh, it, it, she claimed that it allowed you to grow back limbs and cure every disease on the planet. Oh, so man. this was why she was on it. So the jelly juice might be the thing. You should probably get, look into that because if it can grow back an arm, possibly. It hasn't done Easy. it yet, but she, yeah, she thinks it will. Surely, yeah. Yeah. Here's no yeah. biggie compared to an arm. <laughs> Was Dr. Phil, I imagine Dr. Phil was telling her off a little bit. He wasn't happy. No, no, no. There's um, there's quite a few YouTubers that are, that freak, that, that's their whole channel is just about going after cancelling Jilly from Jilly Juice. Um, she's very healthy. She's been on Dr. Phil about three or four times. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. She's a great character. It's fun. People yeah. have been to hospital. I think someone died as well. Yeah. Jilly. Yeah. It's, it's a such pretty. It's a non-threatening yeah. product she name. Jilly. No, she did. She did. Recipe it, sounds, it's, it reminds me of those jolly drinks that used to get at the warehouse yeah, yeah. they were terrible terrible color and less of very yeah. very sore taste on your gums absolutely and i think grandparents seem to always lean on them they'd be like oh it's the same color as coke or it's the same color as sprite but then <laughs> you have one of those and you like burn a hole burn a hole inside yourself yeah. <laughs> those jolly horrible drinks ourselves from the warehouse right like and no matter how i think it's impossible to make those drinks cold i think that even when i grabbed one out of a chili bin and it was surrounded with ice something about the plastic those drinks are in i think that that it's impossible yeah. to chill them they're always warm and disgusting it's like 
an insulated plastic almost. Like a yeah. thermos. Yeah, they, they poured um, money into the, yeah. the casing to make it like a thermos that tradies use. <laughs> yeah, they're constantly at school fairs and the chili bin being served to you by, you know, someone at the gypsy fair. Classic. Sold for, a, sold for a dollar, cost them 20 cents. The worst. Good business. Mm. I wasn't allowed to vote this year because I haven't been back to New Zealand in nearly seven years. So, oh, wow. Um, that was yeah. yeah. Seven years. I I'm a terrible Kiwi. <laughs> I really shouldn't have a right to vote based on that. I mean, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, so. good, good to hear. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Down okay. about that. I had to get my neighbor yeah. to be my witness because I, I live alone. So I had to like carry my laptop across the apartment landing and like knock on the door. And this lady who I've said hi to like once is suddenly like, what are you trying to sell to me? Cause I'm there with my laptop. Like, Hey, can you just put your signature into my computer? <laughs> and um, English wasn't her first language. So I think she definitely thought I was scamming her, <laughs> but yeah. she ended up signing yeah. and I ended up voting, which yeah, a good outcome of scaring my neighbor. And we, we did have to go knock on our neighbor's door to print it for us. And we were a bit hesitant and worried that she'd think we were scamming, but with like, didn't even ask us a question, just started rattling off her email address to yeah. us. And we were mm. like, okay, cool. Pretty sure she also works for a bank. So we're like, so you do know about how easy it is to be scared, but that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> just, that we're not going to, we're next door neighbors, but yeah, yeah. scary. Well, working in a bank, we will say COVID is a, a hacker's gold mine uh, recently. Oh, really? So a lot of your stuff can make yeah. sure you. Yeah. What are the scams? What are the? Wrong. How do I how do I make some money out of this? <laughs> what are people? What are the, <laughs> what are the COVID well, themed scams? We're all the same. Just banks. the classic, yeah, like the, the reverse calls, all of that jazz mm. that's going around. I got one the other day, and I was like, I haven't bought anything, and Holly's like, ah. Oh, that's a scam and uh, I, I should have known that. I mean, but I'm, I'm standing there being like, oh, it's saying some invoice number, they're, they're gonna bill me. <laughs> I'll sort it out later. You yeah. see some really sad things happening, but also you see some pretty ridiculous things happening. Like mm. certainly just people that, yeah, these scams that, you know, people that think that they're an Arabian prince that's inherited millions of dollars from their cousin, the king. Um, people do believe that mm. really frequently, quite often. <laughs> yeah, it's very sad yeah. when you come across face to face. Yeah, having to tell them that you know, You're not Rodrigo is not a uh, real yeah. man. Yeah. So you guys have to break the news yeah. to those people sometimes, or a lot of the time. I don't have to in my job. I work with companies, so mm. I don't have to as such with them. It's more, and they're usually like my Janet and accounts is paid money to somebody mm. that scanned them. Not a big deal. I've had to. Has I've had to in previous roles had to have weird conversations. Mm. Um, but it's yeah, it's it's very sad when you're like, oh, this is such a bizarre thing that you see online, and then when it's actually in the flesh in front of you, and you're you're sitting with someone that's so stonewall, and like whatever you say to them just goes beyond yeah. them because they're so. Yeah, it's so nice. desperate and sad, and it's just. And I think their family. There's so many layers to it. Been telling them for months as well, like Nan, that's mm. not stop sending her money, and they won't listen to their family. They're not going to listen to you, no matter how much authority you have. But it's so sad, and mm. it usually is, unfortunately, little old Greek ladies, yeah. <laughs> like all the time. There's a huge demographic YouTuber that I love at the moment who is he receives calls from scammers and then he's got a voice changer so he'll pretend to be an old lady or he'll pretend to be an old man and make the scammer believe that they've led him along this whole journey and he chews up like hours of their time makes them do crazy things like have facetime calls with him and it's so satisfying to see a scammer get done in <laughs> so hard by this dude who's also a crack up yeah you see there's quite a few channels of them um of people that go after them and it's 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 awesome i think it's really cool i watched a little docu series um where a guy had actually managed to hack the cameras of the office of the scammers mm -hmm. um you can find it on youtube but it's like a the guy himself is he does hacking and yeah, scamming nice. back scam youtube but 
BBC and him sort of like ducked and did this whole series and it was so interesting because he would call in and he'd find the person on the camera who he was talking to in the center and watching them jovially joking and just the mannerisms of them as well mm. um yeah and and would hack into other calls and watch the videos um of the people talking to other people and this the saddest things of people yeah I, uh, mm. when I, I worked in an office once and they had a phone that was for the customers they were to come into the reception area they would be able to use the phone but a scammer had that number and that phone would very rarely ring mm. and then when it would it was going on for about um, three or four weeks and best best time of my life <laughs> uh whatever i was doing at work i would drop that and as soon as i heard that phone i knew i knew who it was so i'd like leave my office go down pick up this phone and it was always like <laughs> same guy or like same same like syndicate and <laughs> they were just trying to pump the lottery scam and like mm. really really trying to like pull the heartstrings did you ever so feel even, I, even though you knew it was a uh, scam did you ever feel emotional we like oh man it would be good if this was real um not really i was just more keen to waste company time and yeah yeah, Ben's just a status. He doesn't give a, he does not care about people's feelings, obviously. He's like, no, feelings. So, uh, yeah, no, that was, that no, was a very, very entertaining, <laughs> entertaining office to work in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ben's a fun place to work. You see some crazy stuff. And you definitely, I must say, both of us within a work, probably within a week or two of working for banks, we're kind of like, is there any way we can't have our money in a bank? <laughs> so, <laughs> that gives you any idea as to how, uh, how onto it we are. I think people think we have magical powers and we can do all these things that we can't like click a button and get your money back instantly. Mm. You pay money to the wrong person, regardless of what the account name is. Sorry, yeah. you should have paid attention. <laughs> like, mm. it doesn't matter if it's five dollars or fifty thousand. That's your fault. Like, yeah. how's um, yeah. how's your cat settled into to Perth? Because he was he's what born and raised Melbourne. Probably. Yeah probably pretty keen on a bit colder temperatures yeah um and she's seven years old i think she's more like a um a divorcee who's like just hitting her stride she's like enjoying being like enjoys single life now she was living because she was a shelter i got her from a shelter um but that's her at the top there just above me in the zoom meeting she's she's loving that bed she has a thing where she wants variation in beds like a lot of divorcees and she'll love that bed for a while and then like four days later she'll love the couch bed that i've got for her that's got like a cat blanket and then sometimes she'll like my bed so yeah i think that she's just she's just loving her loving her life at the moment she's good what's the cat here like because i have not owned a cat since a child mm. days and in a cat yeah i'm not big on yeah, I'm not big on scratches. Here's my thing, Cam. I always see people and I'm like, what's happened to your arm? It looks like you're addicted to drugs. And they're like, oh, I got a kitten. And it's like, that's not a cute. Why do you look at me and say that like it's a cute thing? Like mm -hmm. you look like you have a problem and this is horrible. And I'd be so upset if I had an animal do that to me. I don't, mm. maybe I, I don't like cats. Yeah. I, I'd be keen for a cat. They're just a nice little companion that just hangs out and like they're quite pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough, I, I reckon. I never thought that I'd be a cat person. It was my friend's cat. The cat's called Kittles that converted me. He's a He has a very like lovely puppyish nature and that's what changed me. But I don't think, I think if you're already thinking like that, like, oh, I don't want the scratches or the hair, you probably won't have the switch. Um, Cause yeah, they're yeah. I just kind of like, I tune out all the hair and the scratches. Like I got this t-shirt yesterday. I was really excited about it. And then I just looked down before and there's claw holes in the t-shirt. So you just kind you of accept that. that was that? You're okay with that. You're all right with that. Yeah, but yeah. the trade off, like the you, you know, the, the yeah. love and okay. the affection and the, mm. the That's cute what little... I you for. <laughs> what are you what are you here for? But, like if I'd not I could have just gone a cat, how much easier maintenance would that have been? Cat hair and scratch and oh yeah, ten times that, easier over this. Yeah. No, look, I look I, I look, I'm a dog person, hundred percent. I think Every person I speak to who is a cat or a dog person and has found a new love for cats has said mm. the cat that can 
me. So then there's, I've, I just got to meet my right cat, I think. I just yeah. got to meet my cat. A sphinx was on the cards. It was because they're hairless. Uh, but then I also yeah. was like, I don't know if I want to touch it. <laughs> like, yeah. They still yeah. have a little bit, they have a little bit of stubble. I've met a couple of them. So it's not, it's like, even though they say completely hairless, I think technically there's still a little bit of scratchiness. They're like the 12 hours after you do a clean shave with a razor, like your, uh -huh. your hand kind of gets yeah. stuck on them. Anyway, um, on that note, think about the Sphinx here. <laughs> it was lovely having you guys on the show as the first guests ever of Recapping with Cam. Hopefully this is a show that carries on. If it's not, then we had a nice conversation and it was great hanging out. Thanks. Yeah, cheers, Cam. It was uh, good to see you and nice yeah. to see that you're all settled in there. I'm still alive. You yeah, know? I'm still alive. You're in the cat away at life. We are. Cheers. All good. Yeah, lovely to see you. Have a good one. You too. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and they're gone. Um, only laughing at how budgetly I was helping them exit by moving the window down. Ben and Holly, lovely guests. Um, <laughs> ma magician Aiden. Hi. Are you um are you able to snap your fingers and bring in our next guest? Is he still in the waiting room or did he get to a point where he was like, Cam, you told me that I was joining about 25 minutes ago. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Now that is uh, a magic is that right? Welcome back, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aiden. Um, but this will work. Here he is. Bill Golding. There he is. How are you guys going? Oh, Bill, actually, I was going to play some music as you entered. Do you mind if I just drag the window out for a second and give you an <laughs> intro song? Yeah, sure. Okay, let me just see if I can find it. Um, Aiden, you can just do some. Tell us about uh, tell us about the latest skill that you were impressed by by somebody else that wasn't magic. Um. Yeah, no, I don't want to, don't want to talk about that. Oh, was it? <laughs> sounds like it was an adult skill. Is that? Um, no, it was just all like it was basically a battle of who could um, watch YouTube and learn magic. So it was very evident on like the ten people who were doing magic that mm. we all watched the same video. Ah, okay. So you all learned that $5 trick that you showed earlier. Yeah, it happened uh, two other ones. Another one I did, which no one else did because it was my genius, but um, I basically just like put a, like a, um, just got like tongs and I'd spoken to our friend Tim um, previous and we figured out that we both had the same tongs. Mm. So I was like, yep, yeah, cool. Just regular tongs, just like, yep, yeah, made them disappear. And then I was like, Tim, can you check under your chair? And then just like he pulled out the tongs and everyone was like, wow. <laughs> Solid effort. So Timmy, Timmy has learned magic too. Magic. I don't yeah, realize. so that got Tim out of having to learn a magic trick too. Mm. Yeah, uh, magic has swept through my group of friends by the sounds of it. It sounds like I need to learn a trick. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll make sure that it's a different disappearing trick than the one that you and Timmy know. All right, I've got the yep. intro song ready. Hey, hello. I've waited here for you. Ever long. The man. Tonight. The myth. I throw myself into. The powerhouse. I don't know that. Not Rick Astley. I'm talking about. Bill Golding. Bill, welcome. Howdy, doody. <laughs> Why is Rick Astley doing a, a, like a Foo Fighters cover? You know Rick Astley. That's what he's known for. Yeah. Grunge rock covers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am semi- Oh, I will never give up, Rick. <laughs> I am semi-nervous about um, copyright because I don't know how it works with live streaming. I think normally you get away with it, but I feel like of all the versions of 
ever long that I'm probably going to get away with that the robots don't know that I just played. It'll be the Rick Astley acoustic cover. Yeah. I don't think Rick Astley is trying to lay claim to that one. I think he'd prefer that to be left in obscurity. He'll stick to the one hit wonder. Do you reckon Rick's more embarrassed <laughs> by his cover of Everlong than he is of Never Gonna Give You Up? Like artistically. I mean, one made one made millions for him and the other made millions for Dave Grohl. Yeah. No one would ever know about Dave Grohl's version without his glorious acoustic cover. That is true. There probably are people in the world that discovered that song through Rick Astley. Like maybe th they listen to Rick Astley mostly, like his whole back catalog. I mean, I only listen to Rick Astley, but he's really got me chewed on to this Foo Fighters band. Have you ever heard of the, the, the Foo guy Fighters? was in like a big band before like Nirvana or something? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, Rick Astley's good enough for did me. You guys, I'll, I'll did you guys hear about um, uh, Twitter's reaction to when uh, Paul McCartney and Kanye did a song together? No. What was the song? What did they do? No, choose? I did hear. Twitter's reaction was at Paul McCartney, get set, your career is about to just skyrocket. <laughs> I did hear that actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look out. Hope Paul. you're ready. Brace, your, brace yourself, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Bill, it's Paul McCartney for president, 2028. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you on here, Bill. Uh, what's been happening? How you been feeling? What's new? Um, I suppose not a whole lot, much like everyone else in Melbourne. I'm just trapped waiting for the news to change so we can kind of press play again on living. But mm. uh, I haven't been doing too bad, just focusing on smashing the weight loss, playing video games, smoking weed, all the usual healthy, productive adolescent things. Normally weight loss isn't bundled in with the other two as a, as a checklist. So I'm pretty impressed that you've managed to do all three. Uh, I'm definitely impressed by your weight loss, uh, the amount of it. Am I allowed to ask how much you've lost? Yeah. So I hit a new personal low on Tuesday this week. Mm -hmm. I kind of go like up and down, you know, it's not like an even line, but yeah, I hit 37 and a half kilos I've lost in total. Whoa. That's a whole person. Yeah, it is. And it's, <laughs> and it's going to be an even bigger person, hopefully by the end of the year. I'm trying to lose another... 13 in total that'll be healthy bmi for the first time in like god i don't know how long it's like 15 years or something yeah bro congratulations man that's a, a huge deal and nothing to shy away from uh how how does it feel like do you feel like you're able to celebrate and embrace that uh you mean like uh from an identity perspective, yeah, I feel I feel really good about it. Obviously, physically and biologically, you know, mm. I feel freaking fantastic. It's like yeah. so much better. But it's really hard to say exactly how good I feel because I started losing weight. If you, I don't know if you remember, but I had my leg broken at a I gig yeah. in the start of December. So I spent the first three months of this year bedridden. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I like finally got to be able to start walking again it was like oh i'd obviously put on a bunch of weight from getting like uber eats and all that jazz so um it's hard to say like i don't i can't compare it to normal because i had to relearn to walk and mm. then start the whole weight loss and diet thing too so it's been like a huge like crazy freaking difficult process but hey i mean it feels amazing if i had to say like do i feel better than when i was this time last year it's definitely true yeah man that it's impressive and it sucks that you had to go through that um but yeah it's very impressive we've managed to get to from it what are you most looking forward to about the if the lockdown restrictions i know that they're only slight but what do you what what's on your mind after what was announced today i mean it's the only thing that really changes for me unless i start picking up some new activities like like if i get so desperate for social interaction i'll start playing tennis because apparently that's allowed like Tennis is the be all end all of the Dan Andrews problem solving abilities. So I'll start if I'm not starting tennis, then it'll just be like meeting in the park with like ten people as opposed to five. You know, yeah. it, it's funny. It's basically kind of descended into that MySpace friends type deal where you have to pick like a certain amount of people, and so you're ranking off the people that you want to hang out with versus you don't and you're like i can't hang out with this house of people because this person's there and all this drama is just like way too complicated you know what i mean i just want it to be like as straightforward as possible again yeah man it's yeah you're exactly right have you got people like everyone's probably thinking about their 10 but have you 
I think the way I would do it is think about the people who just would never be on the list. Like I'd be like, okay, I'd think about the opposite. I'd go somebody who I just want to know that these people will never come to anything. I'd have like a the ten people I don't want at something. Yeah. Well, the funny the funny thing about that is the only way you can guarantee that's not going to happen in uh, Fitzroy North, which is mm. kind of where all the venues are. So a lot of people live around here. Is you just have to pick a completely random path. So you have like, I know that you live here and I live here. So you logically pick the park closest, but it's like, no, let's pick this middle of fucking nowhere park just in case we don't <laughs> run into anybody because that's been happening all the time now. Some interaction is really good. Some are just, oh, I did not, I was not looking forward to seeing you again. <laughs> yeah. And you can't play it off as like, oh, I didn't recognize you, but you can't just it's yeah, hard. I guess and, the, yeah like and they're all and they're all like the come, come hang out with me and my friends and like break mm. the rules and stuff and they all want to like hug you and you kind of they go to hug you and you go to like stay away mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have to like <laughs> do all those there's so much like weird little interactions that that's probably the thing i'm most keen to go away is just like getting back to not being super anxious just about seeing people you haven't seen in ages yeah man absolutely um and your on uh you're kind of uh, not on social media we've got reduced social media at the moment as well yeah um i've like taken breaks from it before but mm. the last couple of weeks just the uh, stuff that people are posting there's and maybe it's just my group of friends with people i follow but like so much stuff out there is just so negative mm. like with the like negative news and i've got a bunch of work drama like negative news regarding the coronavirus a bunch of work drama personal drama I'm like man like something's got to give so as opposed to like just deleting the apps which i've done before this is like really weird it's the first time i don't have any compulsion to check social media mm. i literally just don't i don't even uh go to check it and stop myself i just don't want to so i just don't i don't read about like anything anyone's doing anymore do you feel like you've replaced it with something because I, I always hear that if you are removing something that you consider like a, a toxic influence often it's a good idea to replace it rather than just have like the the space where that used to be do you feel like you've swapped it out for something yeah yeah i don't think i really have well at least if i have it's not something that's new to me it's all stuff that i used to do mm. like psychologically i feel like i'm reverting to when I was like 16, 17, 18, and all I did was just sit at home and play video games, hang out with like one or two friends. And I, I would have like completely lapped up this whole period. I would have been like, oh, I don't need to leave my house to have fun. So that's fine. And now it's just like, well, to in order to survive and not just go crazy with, I'm so pissed off, I can't do this, which I like doing. It's like, I'm just going to have to basically become where I was, who I was like 10 years ago. Yeah, uh, That's like been my whole approach, just get back into playing video games and Skype calls and all that jazz. Yeah, man. And you're you're more of a Skype boy than a, than a Zoom man. I'm just not used to saying Zoom. I uh, say Skype and it shows how much of a boomer I am because I only use Skype to call my parents. And I'm like, that's it. I guess that's not what the kids are doing these days. But <laughs> I'm not even on social media anymore. So what would I know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I catch myself doing the same thing. I'm pretty surprised Zoom managed to just skid in on its knees and arrive the way that it did because Skype was just like gradually chipping away. Everyone was kind of like aware of it and using it. And then uh, I guess it must have been like a year, a year and a half ago, it was like, oh, Skype's trying to ask me for $2 to be able to make phone calls off it. And everyone's complaining about that. But then Zoom just turns up and does everything that Skype was doing. They changed the shade of blue slightly, like they darkened the color of their logo a little bit. And everyone was like, you guys invented video calling. I kind of feel, I feel sorry for Skype. Yeah, I mean, Skype uh, as well, when Microsoft bought it, they, Microsoft owned a whole bunch of technologies that were supposed to compete with Skype, but then they bought it, started using Skype instead, and that was only like two years ago, and now it's just gone so downhill for them. I feel bad for Microsoft. It's like, oh, this huge like multi-million dollar freaking investment, and now it's like, oh, they're using Zoom. Oh, Zoom must be making heaps of, heaps of money. Well, I mean, it's free. So I was like, oh, shit. I guess, I guess that was a big turn of the tide. You know, times change. Do you ever find yourself downloading apps that you're like, I think I'll never use this, but I got really caught up by the advertisement for it? Uh, the All like the weight loss apps. When I was first starting to like 
lift weights and do stuff. I was like, there's no way that like a pen and paper is going to be better than some app that's going to track all the stuff that mm. I should be thinking about, but I'm not smart enough to know. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so I'll get this one. I'd pay like 30 bucks for it. I tried all of them. I was like, you know what? Like pen and paper actually is better because the pen and pa- the paper has everything that I want to write on it. Mm. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't believe that of all those like different, you know, weight loss apps that are like 50 bucks and will give you the solution that's going to make you lose this weight. Uh, I ended up just going with nothing. Just wrote everything down on pen and paper. Yeah, man. And then in terms of having somebody, did you have anyone coaching you or... Uh, advising you on what to eat throughout this or was it all just kind of like you made the decision and so you ran with it well i did um i do the same diet that jack's doing my brother's doing um he's been doing weight loss as well i'm at like 37.5 but he's basically at 40 kilos lost too so we've both been going really strong at it in terms of the diet it's a diet i did before it's a keto diet ketosis you Mm. heard of that so basically just eating no carbs no sugars that are a lot of uh, meat and cheese is what it comes down to it's a really easy diet for me to get behind um i couldn't eat like a lot of you know vegetable based stuff and i have a really bad a really basic taste anyway so it's just a whole bunch of steak honestly Mm. and how much exercise because there seems like no downside to that diet or to that like program um you don't need to do any exercise to lose weight i lost the first 25 kilos without doing any but i literally literally didn't do any aside from the rehab stuff i was doing learning to walk again because even if i Mm. wanted to do the exercise i couldn't do it i could only stand up for so long i couldn't walk very long distances either so yeah i lost the first 25 without doing any exercise and now what the weight loss has slowed down but i've started like packing on heaps of muscle from like doing all the exercise stuff now. So as much as I don't have to do it, it's the thing that I really like about it now, as opposed to just trying to look skinny. I want to look like more filled out, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's so weird after being like a fat dude for so long that I've never had any pride in my appearance. And now I've got like all this nitpicky shit. Like I'm like, I need to do this exercise. So this muscle looks bigger. <laughs> I'm taking like freaking measurements of my arms and stuff. I'm like, yeah. what, what, what fucking happened to me? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm doing all this stuff, but I'm becoming the psychologically the nerd I was 10 years ago. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck happened? 2020, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> and uh, clothing wise, are you dressing? Do you feel like you're dressing different? Like a bit of lycra? Yes. Yes. How many t shirts I've thrown out so far? Uh, 34 kilos, right? That was the number. Yeah. Um, for, I'd say. 15 50 oh. <laughs> i did 50 50 t-shirts uh 15 pairs of pants yeah uh god so much underwear so much socks uh freaking heaps of stuff and by the time i've looked at like the stuff that i've got left because i'm going to do it again when i finish like i've dropped the rest of the way mm. i'm pretty much not going to have any clothes left at all i've got literally three garbage bags filled <laughs> with just clothes that i'll never be able to wear again <laughs> good work man it is impressive and it sounds like a time of you muted oh. Get yourself cam i was singing I was singing, you inspire me, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was being so polite as well to mute to cough. But that's the downside. I yeah, I saw that. That was a very tactile maneuver. I've done enough Zoom uh, work meetings that I'm so used to doing that now. What are the most uh, memorable backgrounds that you've seen somebody add to Zoom? Or maybe it's Microsoft Teams that only allows the like C- CGI is probably a little generous in terms of terminology, but yeah, fake... well, we we use Teams. Oh yeah, and all what... of my um, all the all the best ones that my colleagues do, uh, they're not really that creative, but it's more like you go into a group meeting mm-hmm. and you forget to change it and everyone looks who <laughs> is it you don't talk to every day and they go what the fuck's that and the atmosphere in my team is like really negative at the moment because of all this work drama that we've got going on mm. so you know that uh you've seen that uh meme where there's like the dog in the house that's on fire and it's like everything's fine yeah 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 
is see that like all like those types of like really tragic things that's most of our backgrounds in our daily meeting is all this super negative like dystopian terrible stuff then we join a group meeting to talk about the issues and everyone sees that all of our backgrounds are these terrible tragic scenarios <laughs> like scenes of war and destroyed cities and stuff and they go fucking hell i didn't think it was that bad i'm like i don't, I don't know what to tell you you gotta find like humor in it somehow exactly man <laughs> Well, Bill, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm excited for you and happy for you. Even though there's heaps of rubbish things going on, it sounds like uh, some good things are going on for yourself due to your own um, kind of commitment to what you're doing with your weight loss. And um, I applaud it and I'm impressed, man. Yeah, thank you. It's a lot of hard work. Um, just changed so much, you know, I feel I, I, the, I think the secret that everyone keeps asking me about, like, how, how do I like motivate myself to do it? I just think like psychologically, after I started walking, I was like, I'm never getting in that position again, where I'm mm. going to not be able to like take care of myself. And I just never thought it was an option not to. Yeah. Uh, everyone's like, how do you like keep doing it? Like every day? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just have to plow ahead. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. It's not an option to stop to keep going. Yeah. You're a good man, Bill. Thank you so much for joining the first episode ever of Recapping with Cam. And hopefully we'll get you on again sometime. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for having me. No worries. See you later. Have a good one. You too. Aiden, hopefully I'm not making the wrong assumption to start wrapping up. Is there anybody else in the meeting room? There we go. All right. Thank you if you watched this. Thank you to the guests who joined us. And uh, if you're listening to the audio-only version, hopefully it's still legible and you can tell a little bit of what's been going on. But yeah, it's been fun. Thank you, Aiden, for your magic tricks and for your producing. I appreciate it. Thank you, little buddy who's asleep above me. And whatever you're doing right now, whether it's morning or evening, um, I hope it goes well, whether it's breakfast or dinner, I hope you don't bite down on the fork.